Hi there, this is astrologer DK Brainerd, and you're listening to your exclusive astrological forecast for the month of September 2010, brought to you by EmpowerRadio.com. Empower Radio, empowering you. Well, I got some pretty good news for you to start out the month of September. I think in a lot of ways, September is going to be the easiest, most mellow month we've had since the summer solstice back in June. And um, even dating back before that, it's the first time in recent memory that we're not having some kind of crazy major karmic quickening, although there is a little bit of a karmic quickening return coming up at the end of the month. Not going to last very long, but I'll tell you about that so you're prepared for it. But this huge outer planet boondoggle that we've been facing for the last several months, and which admittedly for many of us has pushed our lives forward a lot faster than maybe we felt we could go. Um, for many of us, it's also brought up some very deep soul and transformation issues. Anyway, that, that energy is sort of sliding out of the picture in September. Now, we do start off the month of September in a Mercury retrograde. Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Virgo, which is also the sign that it rules and is said to be exalted in. What does that mean? Well, it means Mercury has a lot of power in his retrograde um, phase this time around. So that can be a good thing and a bad thing, like any astrological aspect. The good part of it is that the part of our life that Virgo symbolizes and rules in your birth chart and in your solar chart, Mercury is working very hard to help you identify patterns that you've gotten stuck in, to find places where you're chaotic and where you're losing energy, and to help you knit those back together and really sort of create a new mental framework for yourself in that area of your life. So that's the good news. The bad news, as always with Mercury, is that there's, there are frustrations, there are delays, there's chaos, miscommunication, that sort of thing. And we probably won't see that really calm down until around September 15th or so. Mercury returns to direct motion on Sunday, September 12th, but it usually takes a few days after the Mercury station for those chaotic Mercury effects to start to die down. And the great news is that after the Mercury retrograde, in the two or three weeks following, we start to get some real flashes of insight about the area of our life that Mercury was trying to help us get in touch with during the retrograde period. So look out for that in the second half of September. A lot of times the issues that we were struggling with during the retrograde, the messes in our life or in our mind that we couldn't seem to clean up, we suddenly get these just pop flashes of insight that really enable us to make quantum leaps forward in that part of our life. As far as other major aspects, September is pretty quiet until the 23rd through the 25th. So I just want to tip you off about that period. On the 23rd, there is a full moon in the sign of Aries. It's right at the beginning of Aries, which is the Aries point or the grid of the world horoscope. And as we've talked about before, anything that happens on that grid of the world horoscope tends to affect us all, and it tends to make what's going on in the entire world or in the collective soul, the collective unconscious, tends to personalize it for us, make us aware of that, and in some way trigger that energy within us. So full moons are emotional times. Just be aware of that. Things may be a lot more emotional than usual. And because the karmic quickening or the outer planetary pressure cooker, the two uh, renamed the Cardinal Climax prize winners on my Facebook page, because this moon triggers that same area of consciousness, we may feel some of those issues from the summer come back around again. I want you to know that this is going to be a very short-lived energy. If some strong emotions come up, it's so that you can clear them and move on to the next better thing. And then also be aware that on the 25th, the sun makes a square to Pluto and Capricorn. So sun moves into Libra on the 22nd. That should also mellow things out a little bit. Libra is the sign of relationships and balance and harmony, and beauty, creativity. So that's a nice energy for us. Um, but the sun square Pluto can be, it's a day when our soul issues are triggered. And so the 23rd through the 25th, I want to make you aware of that. Otherwise, it should be a great month where we can build on what we learned during the summer and really start to see some forward progress again. I hope you found this useful and enjoyable. Until next time, this is astrologer DK Brainerd saying, may you go with the stars.